found out two days ago that school starts today. I thought I had another week. I'm not prepared for anything. My electronics are not prepared for the new semester. I haven't read the syllabi. I haven't even decided on my classes and I honestly have no motivation. So I'm creating this video so that you guys don't have to feel the way I do. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jane and I'm a third year student studying psychology at McGill University. So in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you how I like to prepare for a new semester. The first thing that I like to do is to add my schedule into Apple Calendar. I have everything Apple, so I just prefer using Apple. You can add it to Google Calendar. It doesn't even have to be digital. You can write down on paper. I just like having like a weekly view of my schedule so I know when my classes are, what I have to do before my next class, when my next class is, and how much time I have in between. And I find it's also helpful for the first few weeks when you're not very familiar with your schedule it can be very helpful to have reminders 30 minutes or 10 minutes before class time so I can mentally prepare myself for my next class because for the first few weeks I don't know my schedule by heart so I find that this is really helpful the next thing that I like to do to um, not necessarily prepare but I do this throughout the semester I have my planner so I have actually been using my planner if you watched my stationary haul video what I like to do is for every week that we have of school I will stick a little post-it on my planner because it has a weekly um, spread so I'll stick one post-it on the week I'll write the week number I'll write the date that the week starts on and then I'll list all of my classes and then underneath each class I'll write down the lecture that is scheduled for that week and then if there are any readings I'm supposed to do that week if there are any assignments extra videos quizzes that I have to do I'll also write those down under their respective classes it helps me to not only prioritize one class but to try to do all of the classes equally so the way I do that is I like to finish up a week before moving on to the next week it also gives me an idea of everything that I have to do for the week how much I have left to do for the week and how behind I am in terms of where we're at right now and where I'm at in terms of like notes and stuff the third thing that I'm gonna talk about which is actually the first thing that I tend to do is to read the syllabi it's your whole course in a document and it contains every single thing you need to know for the course all the due dates all the weights of your assignments exams etc all the readings you have to do usually profs even like to include a little schedule of what they have planned for that semester for that class read it highlight the important dates and definitely write down the important dates so for me i like to write it down in my planner if you don't have a planner you can write it down on a, like a piece of paper you can put it in your calendar you can put it basically wherever you want but just write it down because if you think you're going to remember it trust me you're not the next thing that I like to do, I already told you that I create like a schedule on my Apple calendar, but I also like to have a printed version. I made this on GoodNotes. Uh, you could really use anything you want. For this one, I also like to put in like when I usually work. So my usual work times, it varies from week to week, but I usually have like set days. So I'll put those down as well. So I have like a little schedule of my classes as well as my work schedule, but on this schedule I also like to look at when my classes are and then I'll put down when I should watch the lecture, when I should take notes for the lecture, when I should do the reading, when I should make notes for the reading, as well as amounts of time that I would dedicate to each thing. I try so hard, I try my best to watch the lecture on the dates that I'm supposed to have class but that never ends up happening. I'm always behind. I never watch my lectures on time, so don't be like me. Let's say I have, what is this? Um, Psych 304. So I put down lecture time. I would watch one hour of Psych 304 because I had class that day. For this day, I have three classes. So there's Psych 406, 444, and 337. So then I put down the amount of times that I would watch those lectures yeah um forget 406 that was a complicated class but for these two i put down the times that i would um spend watching those lectures when i watch the lectures i only annotate i don't take full notes i have this system 
where I never take notes on the same day that I watch the lecture. So that's why for like 304, the pink one, I'm watching the lecture this day, taking notes this day. For these two, I'm watching the lecture on Tuesday and I'm taking notes Wednesday. So basically I do that for all of my classes. So I have kind of a routine slash schedule that I would follow in terms of my studying. I don't know if I've explained this well, but um, it's basically just a study schedule. On days that I work and have class, I would only put like five to six hours worth of work. On days that I have off, no class, no work, I would usually schedule eight to nine hours of studying. And then on days where I only have class and I don't work, usually I find six to seven hours is a good amount. You don't wanna be jam packing your schedule because chances are, you are not spending the whole entire day studying even though six to seven hours or seven to eight hours doesn't seem like a lot there's other things that you want to be doing in a day so you don't want to only focus on studying if you don't finish what you have to do in the time that you allocated so let's say you told yourself i do one hour for watching a lecture if you don't finish the lecture in an hour move on anyway because if you don't move on and if you just keep giving yourself more time to do what you have to do you're gonna fall behind in other classes just because you're trying to catch up in this one class but i try my best oh yeah i have an interview soon so yeah just try your best to only use up the allotted time and to not go over the next thing that I tend to do is to set up my grades app. It's called iStudies with a Z and I've been using this app for five years. It is honestly a lifesaver. It keeps track of all of my GPAs for each semester. It keeps track of my letter grades for each class and it keeps track of my CGPA. Like I don't know what other people do to keep track of their grades during the semester because the prof doesn't post it. They sometimes just post like one final grade or they only post exam grades, or they just don't post your grades at all, which we love that. So you can calculate what you have in the class, but I find that's just so tedious and to do it every time that a grade comes out is just, I don't have time for that. You just put in all your classes, you put in your grading scheme that either your school or your prof uses, and then based on the grades that you put into the app, for each like assignment, midterm, exam, or quiz that you had, it'll calculate your grade based on the grading scheme that you told it to use. So it is a complete lifesaver. I love this app so much. I think it's so underrated. I don't know a single person that uses it, but yeah, um, honestly a blessing. And let's say like only one midterm will count out of two midterms, you can calculate whether you even have to take the next midterm or for final exams, you can like put in fake grades to calculate what grade you need to actually get an A in the class or to pass the class, whatever your goal is. Yeah, it just gives me peace of mind knowing like I need this grade to get an A in the class. It's just a lifesaver. Like there's no reason not to get it. It's completely free. This is not sponsored or anything, but I really recommend it. The next step that I like to do is filing out the old semester so I have space for the new semester and I haven't done that yet because I kind of thought I had more time before school started so we'll be doing it together in this video. So I use GoodNotes for notes and Notability for lectures and readings and textbooks. In Notability, I find it gets really cramped when you have two semesters together. Unlike GoodNotes, you can't really favorite certain folders. So in Notability, I always do like a a clean sweep so I will always download PDFs of textbooks off of Notability and that's pretty much it for good notes I plan on keeping all of my semesters notes in there because you can favorite different folders what I used to do for my notes is I used to download PDF versions but the problem with that is the amount of times I've had to redraw a brain as a psychology major because I didn't save my notes as note format. So now I've started doing this thing where I download my notes in notes format, save it on a hard drive, download it in PDF format, save it on the cloud, and then also I'll just keep the notes in good notes. And because I do sell my notes, all of them are uploaded in PDF format to Google Drive. So essentially I have three backups of 
my notes. I definitely recommend if you are like a psychology major or even a biology major where you have to reuse schematics where you talk about the same thing multiple times, I recommend saving your notes in notes format. The reason why I've had to redraw brain schematics is because in PDFs you can only do like a screenshot and then when I bring the screenshot into GoodNotes, like the brain is already color coded and different parts are highlighted that I don't want highlighted. So it's just a big mess. So I just, I just redraw it. Another tip, this isn't part of like what I do, but it's just a tip in general. Always start doing stuff the first week of school. I know it's the first week and everyone's like, there's nothing to do. I just have to read the syllabus or I just have to go over the schedule and like prepare for classes, but there's nothing else to do. But do that anyway in the first week because I always make the same mistake of not doing anything during the first week. And then in the second week, I'm stuck doing stuff from the first week and then I fall more and more behind. So start doing stuff in the first week. All right, so the last thing that I do is a checklist. So I don't make a checklist for every midterm quiz or even assignment because profs tend to switch around their schedule. They make modifications about when to do which lecture or if there's a guest lecture or if they're skipping a lecture. So I don't like making a checklist right off the bat because of the changes. I just find it's a waste to have to, let's say, reprint the schedule like five times because the prof made five different changes. For the semester, I don't make a checklist. I only do this for final exams. Obviously, if your midterms and exams aren't cumulative, you're better off making a checklist throughout the semester. Profs in their syllabi usually they'll have like a mini schedule of what they plan on doing for the semester. So I find it's just a waste of time to have to recreate a schedule that's already been given to you. So instead I just use the schedule that's in the syllabi and I'll just annotate on it with a color code. Yellow for classes that have occurred. Pink is everything that i've already watched in green i highlight everything that i've made notes for blue signifies that i've studied for it and then i have one more color code it's purple purple means it's finalized i never have to look at it again so this would be for non-cumulative classes i hope that made sense if it didn't you can leave me a comment. Okay, so my interview is in 10 minutes. That is basically everything that I do. If you found the video useful or helpful in some way, or if you learned something new, please, please consider giving it a thumbs up to support my channel. And obviously, if you would like to see more content from me, then you can hit the subscribe button as well. I would really appreciate it. Hopefully we can get to 1000 subscribers by summer. Let me know if you guys have any other tips and tricks that you do to prepare for this semester or that you do during the semester. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you have a good semester. I'll see you in my next video.